Hi guys, my name is Sabine and welcome to another video. Today I'm unhauling about 20 bucks today. If you watch my videos quite often, you might see a little bit of a change going on in my background. I have a very exciting like bookshelf reorganization video coming to you guys soon. And with reorganizing your shelves comes critically looking at all of the hundreds of books that you own and trying to figure out which ones do I want to keep? Which ones do I want to throw away? Hence why I have another book unhaul video. Someone commented in like one of my previous videos that instead of this being my bedroom, it's more like my book room with a bed in it because I have so many bookshelves and it's like filled to the brim. So I looked very critically at all of the books that I owned and I selected the ones which I wanted to keep and the ones that I didn't. I'd say let's just start off. I do have some controversial picks in my book on haul, but we will get to the reasons of like why I am unhauling them and stuff like that. So I'm just gonna start off with one of my most controversial picks. I've kind of organized these books based on genres. So first of all, we have contemporary books and the first very controversial book that I'm unhauling is You Should See Me in a Crown by Leah Johnson. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> I recently read this one and I did enjoy it but not as much as everyone else and I will talk about that more in like my August wrap up with my in-depth thoughts but it's just like I enjoyed this story and I really liked that it has a female female romance in it and I also liked that this has a black main character but there were some things in this book that I just didn't enjoy so I don't feel the necessity to keep this in my collection and I think that Date Me Bryson Keller by Kevin Van Wy has kind of the same problems. They're not really problems, they are just things that I personally don't like in books and that is insta-love which definitely happened in these two books but I wanted to say a little book recommendation. I think if you really enjoyed You Should See Me in a Crown, Date Me Bryson Keller is a really great book for you to pick up as well. This is a male male romance and it is really cute but with these books I both enjoyed them but that is it and I'm really sad about that because I expected to love these books and unfortunately I didn't so I'm gonna put them on my unhaul pile. By the way, if you see any of these books and you're like, oh my god, I would love to get these in my collection, I will put all the books that I'm unhauling up on my Instagram and you can send me a DM and then we can kind of like talk about prices and stuff like that. Maybe we can do like a book swap. I'd say just look on my Instagram for more information about that. Then I also have The Perks of Being a Wallflower by Stephen Shabosky. This is, I think, kind of like a book community classic book to read. I think I read it last year or the year before that during the reading rush readathon kind of situation or the book tubeathon I believe is what it was called back then and I did quite enjoy it. It was an enjoyable read but that was it for me. You know what I mean? I just I read these books, I liked it, but just not enough for them to be kept in my possession, in my collection. And the same goes to The Art of Being Normal by Lisa Williamson and Solitaire by Ellis Oseman. Let's first start talking about this one because as you may know, I am obsessed with Ellis Oseman, especially with Radio Silence and Heartstopper. Those two books and like series are my absolute favorite reads of 2020. I have discovered Ellis Oseman this year and she's one of my new all-time favorite authors. This was her debut novel and I read it this year as well and wasn't too happy with it. Like I didn't love it. The first half of the book was amazing to me. Like I got sucked into the story. But the other half of it I was quite confused to be honest with everything that was happening and it didn't make much sense to me. So although Alice Oseman is my favorite author, I'm like other books can take up the space of this one. With The Art of Being Normal, I loved reading this book when I bought it like four years ago or something. This is about two main characters so we have two different perspectives. This book deals with being transgender and stuff like that and I really enjoyed it when I read it but I found out that this is not an own voices book so I don't really feel super comfortable promoting that. Like Lisa Williamson has, I think if I have researched this correctly, worked a lot with transgender people so she has some kind of like working experience in the field but I just, I'd rather read and recommend 
recommend a book about transgender like main characters written about by a transgender author because they can I think talk better about the experience of being transgender than a cisgendered author. And then I have two contemporaries which the covers are eerily similar <laughs> and that one is Phantom Limbs by Paula Garner and First and Then by Emma Mills. Can I copy your homework? Yeah, just change it up a bit so it looks like you didn't copy. Okay. Like, do you see what I mean? They both have like those water drops on them. If I'm not getting rid of these anytime soon, perhaps I will check them out. But I bought them when they were on sale on like Amazon. They have been on my shelves for such a long time and I've never even like glanced at them and have thought like, oh yeah, something that I want to read right now. So I don't see that happening anytime in the near future. Now let's go on to kind of like historical fiction fantasy. I don't believe that this is really a fantasy, but I have The Gentleman's Guide to Vice and Virtue by Mackenzie Lee. I also have The Lady's Guide to Petticoats and Piracy. If I'm saying that title correctly, I will put a picture up right here, which is kind of the companion novel in that one we follow. I think her name was Felicia, Felicia or something, the sister from Montague, which is, I believe, the main character of this book. I have that book in my dorm, so I need to get it back home here, and then I can kind of like unhaul these two as a set. I'm saying goodbye to this one because I enjoyed the story while I was reading it, not as much as everyone else, so I didn't like fully get the hype. But recently, a lot of things have been popping up about Mackenzie Lee and that she had previously signed books written by other authors with her name on it. Like, it just, it doesn't make any sense. So I feel like that situation is kind of strange and weird. I haven't read The Lady's Guide to Petticoats and Piracy, but I don't know if I really feel the urge to pick that one up anytime soon. My boyfriend's coming. Oh then I have like another duology situation but with the first book in this duology I really enjoyed the beginning I thought that this was going to be one of my new favorite reads of 2020 but then I just kind of lost interest the further that the story went on and I had already bought the sequel then but this is a super damaged copy of Wild Card by Marie Lu I also have War Cross by her but it's in my dorm but this hardcover copy I don't know if you can see but it is so damaged. Even the hardcover itself, it has just like a big tear in it. The first book ended on quite a cliffhanger, but even that couldn't keep me super interested. So I am gonna get rid of this duology as well. <laughs> it's like a sci-fi gaming kind of book and I really like gaming in books. I loved Ready Player One. That was one of my favorite reads of I think 2017 or 2018. But something about the story and I cannot put my finger on what it was exactly. I just I, I it didn't fall in love with it. Then in like murder mystery thriller kind of novel section I have Sadie by Courtney Summers. Now this was a highly enjoyable and exciting creepy read. I read this book alongside with the audiobook which was exceptionally good so if you have access to that I'd say definitely listen to the audiobook. I also have like a script or scribed never know how to say that abscess name account and I have a link and if you sign up for like a two month free trial with my link I also get an extra month of like listening to audiobooks so of course I love that as well. I love this one so much but it is a thriller it is a mystery i know what is gonna happen at the end i've just read the story and i know what's gonna happen and when you do that with a thriller i don't really feel the need to reread it and i just want to make other people read this book so i'm doing that by unhauling it before we are going to go on to the quite controversial fantasy picks that i'm unhauling i want to show you guys one graphic novel and four short stories which i'm getting rid of so first of all i have adulthood is a myth by Sarah Anderson. She has, I believe, a really funny Instagram account called Sarah's Scribbles and these kind of, they're not even short stories, they're more like meme type of situations about adulthood and how it's all fake and it's just, it doesn't really work. It was so fun to go through this book. I think that this is like a perfect coffee table kind of situation but since I'm living with my parents again, 
I don't really have like a coffee table situation going on. And then I have four short stories which were gifted to me during the Book of Ake, which was a book week in the Netherlands at like the beginning or middle of March. I could go to a really exciting live show event in which Leora from Books with Leo was and that was so fun. And then like two days after it, the quarantine stuff happened. So I'm gonna unhaul Dripa. This is a short story collection of three authors who wrote them and I just, I, I don't have any interest in picking it up. Then I have Leon and Juliette and the Dageraad by Anne Jet van der Zell. She was a Dutch uh, writer who was on the live show. And then last but not least, I have Winterbloei by Jan Wolkers, who is a very famous Dutch literary author. But I just have no interest in picking up this book. I'm so bad. Now let's go on to, uh, <laughs> let's go on to the last final most controversial section of this unhaul, which are fantasy books. So the least controversial one is Roar by Cora Carmack. I'm still kind of doubting whether I want to like actually unhaul this book. I got this in like a 2017 fairy loot box and this is a fantasy story in which like people can kind of control storms and the weather. So I mean that was really awesome. I have read this book and I really quite liked it back then. I believe it is a trilogy right now but I just it's been so a long time since I've read this book and I liked it but I remember not super like loving it so I don't think I will be like continuing on with the series. It was a really cool book though and I think a little bit underrated. I don't know this book has kind of like a special nostalgic weird place in my heart and I don't know if I want to let go of it yet so if any of you guys have read this book have continued reading the trilogy let me know if it even gets better with like the sequels and perhaps I will be keeping it. Then I have have a recent read for me and that is Daughter of the Burning City by Amanda Foodie. Also got this one in a fairy loot box and it was even signed by the author. This is a YA fantasy traveling circus murder mystery th thriller situation. I really enjoyed it. Like I was so surprised by how much I was liking this book. The writing style was really quite slow but in a nice way. So after about like 70 pages I got sucked more into the story a little bit and the world, the circus, it was super atmosphere atmospheric. I cannot say that word atmospheric but it's a fantasy standalone. I've read it right now. I enjoyed it but I want to make space on my shelves for other books. And I know that Leora would really like to read this story, so perhaps I'm gonna give it to her. The last two books and the most controversial ones. First of all, I have Children of Blood and Bone by Tomi Adeyemi. I'm kind of sad that I'm unhauling this one because I even went out of the way to specifically get the hardcover because it is so pretty. I think if you have been in the book community for like two years, you have definitely heard of this fantasy story. This is like a fantasy story inspired by African culture. I don't know if it's also inspired by like African mythology, but it was enjoyable, but it didn't like hold my attention to be super like eager and looking out for the sequels. But I have heard that the sequel is not as good as the first one. So hence why I'm unhauling it, but I'm really glad if someone else can get this book and enjoy it much more than I did. And then the last book that I have to show you is An Ember in the Ashes by Saba Tahir. I guess you all know this one as well. I read this two years ago and I really quite enjoyed it, but I didn't have the sequel and it has been a long time since I've read this book. This is a fantasy inspired by the Roman Empire and I thought that that was super, super interesting. I also really quite enjoyed reading from the two perspectives. And this is a super popular series. I think it's a quartet and the fourth book is called coming out I believe this year or somewhere next year but sometimes you just need to make choices of like okay which series do I actually want to finish and continue with and which ones am I like kind of giving up on so that's definitely the case with An Ember in the Ashes and Children of Blood and Bone but those are all of the books that I'm unhauling right now if you guys have seen any of the books that I'm unhauling today and you're like girl don't do it this book is like amazing then please let me know in the comments down below like I said if you're interested in getting any of these books definitely have a look up on my Instagram. If you enjoyed this video please give it a thumbs up. You can subscribe to my channel by clicking somewhere here on the screen or on the button down below. If you want to follow me on my social media pages of course you can and because I'm a booktuber I have Goodreads but I also have Instagram, Twitter, an email address and an Etsy store and links to all of those will be in the description box down below as well. Thank you so much for watching and I hope that I will see you guys in the next one. Bye!